have received lots of invitations around the world since then. The world travels didn't really start until about 2003. And with each new step for me, there was all kinds of signs and symbols. Um, but the travels began in 1991, and very much like Jesus and the Apostles, sometimes they'd meet in the upper room, but in my case, I did not have a base. Uh, people would say, where is your home? i say, well, home is where the heart is, you know, it's right here or right now, in this moment for me, was my home. So I didn't have uh, any place that I could say was, was my home base. Uh, and I remember teachings from the Bible where Jesus would say things like, um, you know, the birds of the air have their nests and the foxes have their holes, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. And I said, oh, I see what you mean. Uh, there's no place that I have to call home in this world, but also there's no place felt like a tie or a line. Uh, there was no sense of, of mortgages or sense of, you know, light bills and utilities to pay. On one hand, there was none of that. On the other hand, it was quite an adventure not knowing where I would even lay my head down to go to sleep at night. Uh, so there wasn't the sense of stability of saying, oh, I'll just go home and put my head on my bed. It was like there were many different places where I laid the body down at night. And this went on for about five years uh, of having no home and just listening to inner guidance. And I met um, hundreds and thousands of people, mostly in the United States, uh, the mainland United States and Canada, where I was guided to travel. And most of my travels were by car. So unlike some famous mystics like Peace Pilgrim, we did little walking tours over tens of thousands of miles. My tours were very similar to Peace Pilgrim's, except they weren't so planned out as hers. She pretty much knew her route where she was walking. Mine were very spontaneous, and they stretched over many tens of thousands of miles, because the United States mainland and Canada are quite massive. And so I had a bunch of, I used to say to Jesus, am I going to have to come up with parables? You know, like, you know, you talk with parables a lot. He said, no, you have lots of parables just from your life experiences, because there's going to be so many miracles that you would not be able to fill ten books uh, with all these miracles. And so my first trip out was about five and a half weeks, starting in 1991, and it was filled with so many miracles that I even had a woman named Beverly traveling with me, and she said, we don't have any money, we're probably going to have to stop and do dishes or, or find part-time jobs along the way, I said, oh, get ready, this is, the Spirit's going to knock your socks off. This is like nothing of the world. I could feel it. And after she was on the road with me for five and a half weeks, she, about three week mark, she called back, uh, told the landlord she was letting go of her apartment, uh, had left all of her jobs uh, to travel with me, and she was just blown away, as I was. Uh, hitting the road with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. It was just, a, it was like a spectacular uh, show opening up where I was invited into places. Uh, I had to let go of all my sense of knowing where I would go and how it would unfold. The first night out, I, I went to a church in St. Louis, Missouri, and it was just amazing. They gave me uh, first class was a Course in Miracles group, and I spoke at that, and then they said, would you speak to the second group? And I said, oh, do you have two Course in Miracles groups at the same church, at this one after another successively? That's kind of strange. And they said, no, the second group is the Urantia group. We want you to speak at the Urantia group second. So there was the Urantia group, and then uh, the facilitator was like a, a man who's probably in his 70s, a re retired psychiatrist, and he gave me the Urantia book, and he said, here. I think you'll be interested in the last section on the detailed teachings of life and the teachings of Jesus. So I had that with me on the road. Then the second night out, I was at a, at a rest stop in uh, Tulsa, uh, yeah, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and there was a blind man there, he had a guitar, and he was playing, and, and I just met so many people. Third day out on this trip, I'm driving through uh, 
Okay. That was a different part of Oklahoma, because I think I came to Tulsa, then third. And I had a little sheet with Course in Miracles listings of groups and churches and homes with me. And uh, it was about uh, 10 minutes till 12, and it was at the Unity Church. I was guided to go to this one, the Unity Church. And I said to the Holy Spirit, and Jesus says, I can't walk in on a course group in the last 10 minutes in a town that I've never gone to. I said, that's ridiculous. And he said, oh yes, you're going into this church service or this uh, course group. So I kind of walked in, sat down, and they were having a huge heated discussion about sexuality. Uh, it was a wild uh, discussion about sexuality. So I got to hear the last 10 minutes of that. And then they said, they noticed me and they said, oh, we didn't know you were here. Uh, we're not really like this. Uh, we don't talk about uh, sex every week. It just, we got off onto the topic and it got real heated and everything. And I said, no, I was just guided to be here. And so I told them about my guidance and how I made it there. And then they said, well, you must come to lunch. They invited me to lunch. And then they invited me to this man named Jack to go to his condo, having just met me and said, here, here's the keys to the condo, I've got a few things to do. Use the jacuzzi, use the tennis courts, make yourself at home, I'll be back in like four, four or five hours. And then came back, after I was just making myself at home, <laughs> and said, uh, why don't we go out on my houseboat and have a Course of Miracles gathering? You seem to have a lot of wisdom around the Course, maybe you can help us get clear of all this stuff around sexuality that we were arguing about. So they called a bunch of people up, I went out on the houseboat, we had a session on the roof of the houseboat, the moon comes up, and we're spitting watermelon seeds outside, off the side. It was surreal. I was just so willing to be used by Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And that began this wondrous adventure where I was so taken care of, uh, better than any plan I could ever have. Even if I was a multi-millionaire, I couldn't have scripted uh, these deep encounters with people that I felt like I had known my whole life and we would just come together instantaneously and we would be talking like we knew each other forever about the deepest things in our hearts. And he would do this over and over and over, every single night. It just, after three or four nights out on the road with Jesus, it just blew my mind. I was just like, is this the way that my life's going to be? And he said, oh yes, uh, and much greater things you can't even imagine. Uh, there's much in store for you. So, basically that first trip took me five and a half uh, weeks. And uh, the woman Beverly who traveled with me, we ended up with donations and more money uh, at the end when we came off the trip than we had started with. She was just, it was a mind blower we could be out traveling on the road for five and a half weeks and start to get donations. People donated. Like, she was really concerned about food. Like, what are we going to do for food? This guy in Oklahoma was a salesman, but he gave us a big box of those, you know those little individual um, cereal boxes that they have with little variety packs? <laughs> he gave us a big box of that. And I'm kind of a mystic at heart, you know, I don't need a lot of variety anyway, but I'm like, oh look, a different variety. Every day of the week we can have she said, well, we have to get milk. I said, I don't even need milk. This is even better. It's all sealed up. You don't even have to worry about it going stale or anything. You can just have French, crunchy grains. I said, St. Francis would have loved this. This would have been like a walk in the park for St. Francis to get, you know, individually variety Kellogg's variety pack or whatever. So people donated things like that. And if we needed gas money or things like that, you know, people were started just offering. And it reminded me of what Jesus had said in the Bible about seeking first the kingdom of heaven and all things else will be added unto you. It sounded good, but it's just like I had a lot of conditioning in this world that said that's not the way it works. Uh, you have to earn your way, you have to fight for everything, you have to work hard. And, and I had been through 10 years of university and so I had quite a lot of learning. Protestant work ethic and all these Protestant ideas and then the more I got into the Course and the Urantia book, you know, I, it was just, I was crying tears of joy about, oh, you're showing me the gateway to the Kingdom of Heaven, and it's just spectacular, and I just felt so touched and, and so grateful.